Thank you. Good morning. So um, I've been talking about enterprise smart contracts. I have 15 minutes. It's a pretty deep topic. Um, uh, this is also known as cripplets. Enterprise smart contracts is a nice marketing term for people that aren't uh, very technical. Um, but let's talk about some background first. So in Azure, Microsoft's cloud platform, we have some pillars that we've built upon um, to build uh, this platform. The first of which is identity. Um, Azure Active Directory is an open federated um, identity system, uh, supports open authentication. Um, it's the dominant um, identity system used in enterprises today. Um, and it allows us to do open federation. Um, second is uh, secret storage or HSMs. So we have HSMs at scale and something called Azure Key Vault um, that lets you bring your own keys, bring your own secrets and things like that. Uh, recently announced the Confidential Compute Platform, which is essentially uh, describing uh, enclaves at scale in the cloud, both SGX and what we call hypervisor-based or HSM, uh, excuse me, VSM-based uh, enclaves uh, that allow you to have secure confidential compute uh, in the cloud. And then lastly, hyperscale. So we have a platform that was developed called Service Fabric um, that runs things like Xbox Live. So we have like this massively scalable uh, platform uh, that we can, we can build upon. So let's describe what this does. So uh, ESC is the acronym we're using, so Enterprise Smart Contracts essentially. Um, uh, under the covers we call the, the ESC framework running in, in, in the, excuse me, the ESC fabric, uh, running that has some core infrastructure capabilities. The first of which is we authenticate users um, so we use Azure Active Directory to authenticate those users. Now, don't think it, we can use this to authenticate using Facebook if you want to. Um, but essentially, you authenticate the user when, and attach a message. That flows into the system to create a secure session. Um, cripplets themselves have dependencies, meaning this is what I require. Do I require an enclave? What kind of runtime environment do I need? Am I a .NET or a Java uh, or a Rust uh, cripplet? Um, so those dependencies are inspected. Um, and then the, the infrastructure has essentially um, many HSMs available to it. Those can be in the cloud. They can also be on-prem. Uh, and then we pool scarce resources. Enclaves would be one of them. But we envision that you would want to use things like FPGAs to accelerate zero knowledge proof generation, ASICs, GPUs, whatever, some sort of combination. So we allow you to have single sort of, um, we call them delegates, uh, essentially. But you're delegating your cryptographic operations to this enclaved environment. So what happens at runtime is a crypto delegate gets built that will be injected with an enclave with the appropriate secrets and the appropriate APIs that you're trying to use for the platform. So if you're using ECC, you'll get the appropriate ECC libraries. Um, you also might get a composite where you would get both an enclave and an FPGA, and you can call this thing a foo, um, and give me a foo at runtime, and then I'll have my alg algorithm generate the zero knowledge proof or whatever you want to do. Um, so you can really compose this hardware acceleration um, uh, for the, your requirements that you have. So this allows us to do things like dynamic allocation and, and deallocation. So we pull these resources to get massive scale. Uh, it also reduces cost. So you can start doing very innovative things with low cost, because you're only paying for what you're using. So you're not gonna pay for all this stuff 24 by seven, you're gonna pay for it for the second or two, depending on what you're doing. Uh, that you're actually using it per transaction. Now, uh, we'll talk more about some of the, the uh, ramifications of this, but um, you can do everything from just basic signatures to threshold encryption. So you can do encryption in the cloud as well um, using these. So the broader framework, um, we do support uh, multiple ledgers down at the bottom. We have, uh, a couple years ago, we announced blockchain as a service, which is, I unfortunately named it that for some reason. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Essentially, it was based on Ethereum. Uh, everything we do at Microsoft really starts with Ethereum, and we sort of branch out from there. So Enterprise Ethereum Alliance or Quorum and things like that. Uh, but we also support Corda and these others because we abstract them away with what we call the blockchain router. And this is a, a common abstraction pattern where we define a basic interface where anyone can write uh, a connector that plugs into the router has a sim simple interface def definition. And then uh, it has very uh, blockchain specific, uh, it knows how to create blockchain specific transactions. You will create contract proxies, which is essentially 
taking that next step where we talk about a type system. Cripplets don't know uh, what blockchain they're talking to. They don't care. They deal with message types. So strongly typed messages are very important for contractual business. We need to know not only what a message structure is, but what data types are embedded. Um, we can't, don't allow variants. So they need to be declared integers or doubles or floats or whatever, um, or composite types. Um, cripplets will then use those message types um, and then they uh, pass them down to the proxy. The proxy can ingest uh, those message types and then convert them into the appropriate blockchain transaction. You see the scripted delegates uh, attached to these various locations. These things are, again, generated on the fly. We support multiple signatures. So you have, um, if you're familiar with certificate chains, we call it a cripplet onion, which are layers of, um, of uh, crypto um, uh, validations of each operation, both from an attestation standpoint that the code ran confident, uh, confidentially from the enclave to the source of your data actually came from where it was supposed to come. Um, so we, we uh, create this signature onion. Each signature validates all the nested uh, signatures underneath it. So we sign at multiple levels. We also have cipher diversity. So you can sign with ECC, RSA, any uh, uh, ciphers that you want to support. It's a very flexible platform. Um, up at the top, uh, so these cripples, we'll talk about them a little bit later. You can write them in .NET, Java today, but we'll, uh, or native, um, but we'll support um, any sort of platforms. We're agnostic what you want to do. You'll, it'll be open so that you can port your own runtime uh, and create your own container uh, that runs in this platform. Above the layer, we're using standard AMQP. If you're not familiar with that, that's a ISO standard for, for messaging. It's used in the enterprise. Um, so we're using AMQP as the basic interface. Um, and those messages, those strongly typed messages are what are being passed back and forth. So you define your API with your types and your messages. You can stick a REST or an RPC on top of that message um, AMQP very simply and easily. Or you can just serialize your messages to JSON, which is the default. Um, so it's a very open platform, very easy to integrate into any front-end application or any existing application. Uh, a couple of things that you should note about this. If you, the cripples are running uh, above the blockchain, they can run in a singleton pattern. You can also reach out. Uh, cripples can communicate with each other. So we talk about blockchain oracles. Uh, you can certainly write a blockchain oracle here and write um, attested data to an, uh, any underlying blockchain if you're thinking about writing an oracle, and you're concerned if, you know, how do I support multiple blockchains? This is one way for you to do that, to write your oracle once and support many different blockchains. Uh, but you can also do oracle services directly from cripplet to cripplet. So you can have a utility cripplet, which is what we usually call an oracle, because it can do more than that, actually pass attested data to another cripplet that's running a contract. Um, we have three basic cripplets. You have your util utility cripplets. Those are the ones that can provide attested data, but you can also connect to an ERP system. You could uh, react to some sort of event that happens in the outside world um, very easily. And then that utility cripplet can then communicate with what we call uh, a contract cripplet, which represents your typical uh, smart contract or enterprise smart contract is what we call it. Uh, but we also have a, a token cripplet as well in the spirit of this conference, which essentially is a contract cripplet with token behaviors exposed as well. Um, and it allows you to create uh, these types of uh, scenarios. So the token cripplet, for example, is very interesting. If you create a token cripplet, the cripplet actually controls all the uh, ERC-20 sort of functions. So the, uh, the issue, the transfer, the burn, um, um, the minting, all of that stuff is uh, controlled through the cripplet itself. But then I can extend the behavior. So I can add behavior for my token off chain. Um, and that can also assume the identity and use uh, the identity of the person that has a balance for that token. So you can do some very interesting things with this platform um, as well. So we're not really sure what, what customers are going to do, but the interesting thing is you can do cripplet to cripplet, um, cripplet the outside, and then also you can um, create your proxy. You can have it monitor events on the local blockchain and react to them uh, as well in the outside world. So. How do you get started? A lot of people have asked, we've been talking about this for some time. When do I get to see code? When, do I, when can I play with this? Well, 
Um, we tried to get this done before the show, and we're going to come out and say, hey, it's open. Here, go run this. Go to this URL, and you can get a test drive. But we couldn't pull that off in time. Um, but as soon, within the next, I uh, hope, uh, two weeks, we'll, we'll be able to have an environment where you can go out and do a test drive, where you can stand up this environment, and you can build um, an enterprise smart contract and cripplets uh, from scratch to, to start learning in it. This platform's currently in what we call early adopter, or private early adopter preview, or private preview, which we're going into a regular cadence. I'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But if you're building these things, essentially all you have to do, the infrastructure is built for you and abstracted from you. So um, as you would expect, you simply focus on what you're trying to do. The first thing you always will, will talk about is you know, contract first development. So you, you will develop your message types. So you define your message types and you can pick your language and .NET or uh, Java and this is what it looks like. Uh, pretty simple, getters and setters are basically properties. This is in C Sharp. Uh, we're inheriting, this is the token, Cripple it, you know, it inherits from the base token. And then it has constructor messages, create token that derives from the base token constructor. Um, and we have, you know, like return types. And down here you can see others. Uh, we can, if I have time, I'll switch over and show you some, some more of the code. But this is an example of the, the, to um, the types that you'll do. Um, so you, really simple uh, types that serialize to JSON. So um, you just got to pay attention to that. You really, uh, the, the framework takes care of the serial serialization for you, so it's standardized. If you've ever done cross-platform serialization with JSON, it's not as smooth as it always seems it should be. But we've, we've uh, taken care of that for you. Next, you then write your uh, cryptic code, utility, contract, or token. Depending on what you're writing, you'll derive from, uh, you always derive from the base cryptic um, class here, so this is the token cryptic. Then you'll implement the interfaces. So there's a contract cryptic interface. By default, a token cryptic is a contract cryptic. Um, you cannot be uh, a token cryptic without being a contract. And that has to do with um, the isolation level that the code runs in. Uh, whereas a utility cryptic can be multi tenant, so I can have multiple subscribers to an Oracle type service. A contract cripple can only have one binding, or what we call it a essentially a binding. Each instance of that same um, binding gets a new instance of a cripple that's either running in a full enclaved environment or a partial enclaved environment with a crypto delegate. So, uh, cripple had uh, basic constructors. This is where we construct this API. Um, Cripplets can be inspected by simply passing a real simple message into the framework and saying, Tell me about the cripplets you have registered. Then you can pick one cripplet and say, tell me what your API is. What that means is it's going to take here of its functions. These are these message types that are defined as the types. When I say these all serialize automatically to JSON. So when I query it, it's going to serialize all these and say, here are my functions with their JSON structure. And here are my returns with their JSON structure. So you know exactly how to communicate with it. So you can construct your own libraries or we can provide you a jar file or a DLL for you to work with those types. Very simple stuff. Um, then uh, lastly, you need to generate your proxy. So this is where the um, where tooling comes into play. So we're doing a lot of work around the tooling, so we'll generate as much of the proxy as possible for you. So there's two types of ways to generate um, object models that get some sort of underlying data structure. You can do what we call data first, that's where you've established the database, like a SQL database or whatever, or solidity in this case. And then I can uh, use that to then uh, create a proxy from that structure. So meaning I already have my solidity defined, I can then generate a proxy. Now, uh, usually when you're writing your solidity for um, an enterprise smart contract, you only want to put the logic down that makes sense to put down in your enterprise smart contract, or excuse me, in your smart contract. So you want to do things that, that um, if you're uh, transitioning assets or changing ownership for assets that are providenced on that blockchain, um, then you want to do that and perform that logic on the, in, in your Solidity code. Um, there's lots of nuances there, but essentially we'll, we'll generate the proxy first. Uh, code first is where we, you have the type system that you defined and we'll then uh, create the Solidity for you. Uh, but yeah, you do some basic customizations. These uh, proxies can be written in any platform as well. This is using the Ethereum. So the, the, the Ethereum team, the, um, the guys at Consensus, are um, doing a lot of work um, 
for generating the proxies for uh, this platform. And we expect each of the major platform providers and anyone will be able to take the standard interface, which has an initialize function and an uh, execute async function. That's it. Um, and you can plug it into the router, it just works. Um, so again, today we're supporting .NET, JVM, and native. We'll listen to our customers. If you have a particular runtime you're interested in, there's enough demand, we'll do the work. Of course, it'll be open so that you will be able to create your own and port over there. We're gonna do rich tooling with Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code as well. we'll uh, you'll see that in the um, test drive when you start to play with it in a couple weeks. Uh, so uh, follow-ups, I'm out of time here. Come by our booth, we're just outside the door here. We're doing demos, you can go uh, more in depth in code, you get hands-on, the hands-on labs to actually see what it looks like. Um, watch for the, the test drive coming out in a couple of weeks. That'll include the hands-on labs, the extensions, um, and the sample source will be released at the same time. So you, if, you, uh, if your code's not working, you can go look at the finished code to see what's, what you've done wrong. And then uh, we'll be transitioning from, public, uh, from private preview to more public previews in the coming months. Thank you.